Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I talk about the best PvP class for the Elder Scrolls Online. Now let me directly start off by saying there is no best PvP class out there. It really depends on what you are going to do as well in PvP. Are we going to do small skill, um, two main groups, four main groups, eight main groups? Are we going to do group PvP like 10 plus groups? Are we talking about dueling? So in this video I'm going to cover a couple of things. So uh, what I'm mostly going to cover is one first one, how the class performs small skill like two to eight man people and then um, big groups like 10 plus and for big groups we also have a difference between support role and DPS role. Support role I mean kind of like buffing up your group members plus placing AoE doing crowd control whereas DPS really is AoE bombing and nuking. Now of course I'm not all knowing and these are just my own this is just my own opinion so if you have a different opinion totally fine you know feel free to leave a comment and we can just discuss it talk about it I'm not all knowing and I just hope this video helps you gives you a better insight on how each class is again this is for PvP I'm strictly talking about PvP here I will be working on a separate video in regards of best one first X class and stuff like that because I just couldn't add it to this video because the video would just be too long even with time fragments. So without too much further ado, let's get started. You can see the timestamps also underneath the comments. If you just want to check out a certain class, you can directly skip to that class. So first of all, the Stamina Templar or well, Templar in general, Magic Templar, Stamina Templar. Um, absolutely one of my favorite classes. I absolutely love to play the Stamina Templar. Now, the Stamina Templar, I really wouldn't say it is like dominating in a certain field. Like, certain classes are really good in group PvP, um, group or supporting, or one first one situations. Or the Stamina Templar, I kind of feel like it's really good all around. It can be a really good support, um, it can really fit in group situations, but you can also hold your ground in one first one situations. Uh, the last duo on Computer Europe, we saw a couple of Stamina Templars do very well until I think the Quarters and then the Templars were eliminated. Not a lot of Templars were dueling, um, as the other classes were just much better for dueling. But still, the T Templar is really good for both group situations and one first ones. And there are several reasons as to why. In one first one situation, let's say you are finding something like a Magicka Dragonite. You will get a lot of damage over time effects on you and health debuffs. And the temple has access to a very cheap perch, or a very cheap, a very efficient perch, such as Extended Ritual, which allows you to remove up to 5 harmful effects from yourself. And allies in the area can activate a Purified Synergy, cleansing all harmful effects from themselves. So the Templars can be great for both um, small skill PvP and group PvP as well, as their Extended Ritual will be good for group PvP as well. Um, they aren't too efficient in like, let's say, if you're running a 20-man Zerg or group. But for something small like 4-man, 6 people, um, 8 people, the Jeps will be more than enough to have some um, sort of AoE attack. Plus on top of that, the Extended Ritual is just so nice to have in a small skill group. On top of that, they have some really nice um, abilities, such as Restoring Focus, that increases your physical and spell resistance but also grants us some really, really nice stamina recovery. It restores, gives us 240 stamina recovery every one second, and it only costs us 884. So within four seconds, you already gain your stamina cost out of this, and then we aren't even taking consideration the spell or physical resistance. So apart from just being able to purify themselves, they can also buff up themselves really good in regards to physical and spell resistance, and in terms of recovery. Abilities such as Repentance really allow them in group fights to gain a lot of resources from um, all the enemies around them, all the corpses. So all with all, I would say the Templar is great all around. Um, not the best class if you are looking into doing like big group PvP, unless you want to play support. If you want to play support like a healer in 20 main Zergs, then you should definitely go with the Magicka Templar. But if you want to play someone like DPS in a 20 man group, um, then I wouldn't recommend it. If you want to do small skill PvP slash one first ones, one first one, it isn't the best class out there. Group small skill PvP 
or DPS support, it's one of the best classes out there. And it's just a lot of fun to play. Several abilities such as Power of the Light, uh, which copies 20% of the damage inflicted with a maximum copy damage of, well, this game 1600, though 16k, though I don't wear all the gear at the moment. And just stuff like this, you know, really allows you to, like, new gun your enemies. So, Battlegrounds, they perform really nice in 4 vs 4 vs 4 Battlegrounds. Open World PvP, I really like to do duo PvP with my Templar. Um, like, 2 to 4, or up to 4 people, 6 people. Templars perform great in that. Both Magicka and Stamina. Now, the next one is the Sorcerer. And the Sorcerer is definitely one of my favorites to play. In regards of dueling, they can be very strong and it can be very hard to compete with them. Uh, when I, during the most recent dueling tournament on Computer Europe, there was a stem sword who ended up uh, third place, if I remember correctly. Anyways, all the other people who won were knife blades. Not going to, too much into depth about the knife blades, but just the fact that the sorcerer, a stamina sorcerer, ended up third. Uh, and this was even before the update of removal of major fracture. From the Nightblade's ability says a lot about the Sorcerer's capabilities for dueling. Apart from that, I saw quite a lot of people running Sorcerer as Sorcerers are powerful and hard to kill on a 1 first 1. Because they have powerful shields that will protect them. They can have some great sustain thanks to their abilities such as Dark Conversion which converts Stamina into Magicka. And they also have very strong movability thanks to their tele teleportation abilities. They also have some great burst potential as they can have some um, instant cast abilities such as crystal fragments when it procs and if you are a stamina sorcerer you can have some great movability as well because you can still use your teleportation and on top of that you can also use something like thundering presence or boundless storm. And max Sorks is one of those classes I actually enjoy a lot and they are very versatile. Like, you can play a mech sword, in my opinion, like an open world solo easily. And the reason for this is, let's say you get in a situation and there is a wall zerg coming down from there. Like, all the Persians from Sparta 300 are chasing you, aka Ebonheart Pact. You can just quickly teleport away, recast something like Thundering Presses or Boundless Storm run a bit. Wait for the cooldown and teleport again. So the movability is very good on the sources. On top of that, you can easily and quickly recover, depending on your setup. If you have someone like Healing Watch, you can heal. You can use someone like Dark Conversion. And also your shields such as Hardened Ward are very nice. Um, group situations, they are very powerful as well. Because they can use powerful AoE ultimates such as Destruction. But they can also be more supportive role by using something like a Suppression Field. Which will um, make the enemy unable to cast any skills that are like magicka slash spell based apart from that they have some nice um, overtime effects such as harming harming curse they can use powerful pets that will heal them as well which actually do a lot of damage since the recent update and they have powerful executes on top of that as well so they are great for like small scale pvp they you see them a lot in battlegrounds and they are very efficient in battleground because they can quickly move throughout the map uh, they can quickly go back if, in case your rally get, gets captured, you know, you can quickly catch up with the enemy. But you are also have no problem with killing enemy players or applying the executes such as Mage's Wrath. Uh, for group PvP, they are powerful as well. Ultimate such, such as Destruction Ultimate are used a lot for group PvP, even in big groups. People also like to use um, Detonation from the Assault Line and sometimes they you like to use the Morph. From the destruction staff and they run something like pulsar or anything like that so all with all the magicka sorcerer or even the stamina sorcerer because the stamina sorcerer as well can run stuff like steel tornado stuff like that and that would be very powerful in group situation but also be built for one first one setups and be very powerful with werewolf so sorcerers actually do very well all around I wouldn't pick a sorcerer for a supportive role except for like something like suppression field but in regards of healing or purging their allies they aren't as good as something as let's say a stamp uh, templar or a magicka templar as they do not have like a class purge so they will need to go to the alliance war support line to gain their purge and this one will cost more much more magicka than the one from a templar 
all in all i would say that temp the sorcerer is a good class to play with a lot of fun great movability great burst potential and good sustain the only thing you want to watch out for when you are a magic sorcerer is sometimes you have people running something like shield breaker and then it's just like light attack light attack light attack so that is the only thing so the next one is the Nightblade, and the Nightblade actually saw some nerfs during the Elsewhere patch, such as the removal of Major Fracture from the Ambush attack, and also Incap, which got uh, Major Defell removed. But all with all, Nightblades can still perform very, very well. So, what do Nightblades really do? Nightblades really are a bit like Hit and Run, though it is not necessarily a thing, as always in ESO you can build however you want. There are plenty of Nightblades out there who are running a heavy armor Nightblade build um, that is just really hard to kill, that actually doesn't use something like uh, Shadowy Disguise, but use the other morph which use for their max health. Uh, Nightblades have some great burst potential, you know. They, can, uh, they are overall quick on their feet and they can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time. They can use the shakes to move around, doing light attacks, quick damage over time effects, go in, try to get some burst going, then try to get out if they get pressure too much. That is how Nightblades play overall. So how do they perform? Well, we have seen them perform extremely well. I talked about the dueling event earlier, though this was before the change, and the first place and second place of the one first one dueling tournaments were Nightblades, third place was a Sorcerer, fourth place was another Nightblades. So that gives you a grasp of how good Nightblades are for dueling. And they are really good at dueling Nightblades. But what about the other situations such as open world PvP, group PvP and stuff like that? Now, for small scale battleground stuff like that, I do like Nightblades. Like, you do not want too many Nightblades overall, because that will just make you too vulnerable. But having one Nightblade in like group situations of... Um, two to six people it can be really nice to have a nightblade that goes around picking off people from behind and then quickly goes back however when we are going to talk about like bigger group pvp situations um, there are sometimes nightblades running though it's not like the ideal class you want as there are better options for like big group pvp let's say group pvp of 10 plus players 20 men groups when you're having a 20 versus 20 um, there are like other options out there that are more viable. Now, I don't want to say like Nightblades are useless or anything like that in big group PvP fights. The thing is, overall there will be another class that just does it better than the Nightblades. But when we are talking about one first one situation, stuff like that, um, the Nightblade could still be very much considered king. Um, even if you really mess up or anything like that, if you have like something like a shade standing in the um, far away, let's say you are having a one first one here, you teleport back to the shade, and then you cloak. Um, unless the enemy player has someone like uh, an explosion, like a haunting curse or anything that will pull you out of stealth, it will be extremely hard for him to find you out of stealth. Maybe if he's playing a Nightblade as well, then not so much, but if that isn't the case, you almost have the option every time to reset a one first one fight. Now, of course, this is not allowed in duels, but even then, like... They perform extremely well even with certain rules. So that is my current take on the Nightblade. Um, if you have a different opinion as always, you know, feel free to leave a comment. I always love to have a good discussion and just talk about it because I'm not all-knowing either. Next up we have the Dragonite and the Dragonite is actually in my opinion an awesome class to play in regards of animations, how it plays like and how it feels like. Uh, Dragonite you will typically see with a lot of damage over time effects. Now don't get me wrong, there are quite a lot of Dragonites there which has some very high burst potential as well. Um, people like Bitslobo or Scarix really know how to master the Dragonite and know how to play those. Um, they have a lot of burst potential and some of their abilities such as Take Flight or if you take the other morph, you know, um, the Leap. You have a lot of burst potential and it's probably one of my in my opinion the coolest ultimates in the game out there in regards of animation how it feels like um, just taking off those wings and just bursting into your enemy it's overall a pretty cheap ultimate um, but in regards of playstyle and what you are good at so first you of all one first one one first one's dragonites can be quite brutal especially because of their reflective wings 
if you are fighting dragon knights especially when you are someone like a caster and then you are using like protective plate or um, wings it can be quite hard to fight with them flex your skills reducing damage take from projectiles by 50 percent for six seconds um, so they actually changed it um, there has been a change with the elsewhere patch and some people say it's a nerf um, other people actually like it more some people who main dragonite i thought scar set for example that he liked it more because the uptime is longer so well that is something that is a debate but apart from that i would say dragonites are strong in one plus one um, they can be tanky they can take the other morph that will like um give you a really good shoot as well in one first once in regards of group pvp uh dragonites can do group pvp especially like small scale like two forming groups it, it is very nice to have a dragonite with you however i wouldn't say dragonites are too useful for big group pvp and we are talking about like 10 main groups there are classes that are much better than a dragonite in regards to group pvp such as the warden for example just that one is a lot better in, in terms of buffing up their allies and in terms of dealing aoe damage now they do have a couple of debuffs that can be useful but overall i don't see too many dragonites running in a group it is much more dominated by sorcerers battlegrounds they can be very nice because that is like the situation we were talking about like four versus four versus four so these kind of situations dragonites are great one versus one they can definitely hold the ground um, small school pvp so two to four people two to six i would say dragonite is nice but once we are really looking to the big group fights 10 versus 10 20 you know um, really the big groups slash zerging then the dragonite well the talents and stuff like that it can be useful but overall i just don't see them too much running around there are a couple of people like the take flight can be very nice for the knockback when you are aoe bombing so for stuff like that dragon knights are useful but it's just like one or two dragon knights in your group will be sufficient for you in regards of that um you don't want to like run a whole group of dragon knights unless you just want to troll around you know next up we got the warden and specifically of course stamina and magicka warden and so first of all one first one one first one the warden isn't great okay now last time i said something like this people were like well i can wreck people on my like i'm not saying you can't kill people one first one with a warden you definitely can the warden has some great time abilities the thing what i mean is if you are going in specifically into a dueling guild like a high-end dueling guild high-end dueling tier um, it will be extremely hard to perform well with a warden in regards of one first one dueling uh, I haven't really seen any like insane one first one wardens duels I haven't even seen wardens reach the quarters now maybe we just don't have any good warden plays on computer Europe though I have seen some really good players uh, it's just not really a class for one first one situations however the warden makes more than up for it for group situations wardens are extremely powerful when it comes to either supporting crowd control dealing dealing aoe damage supporting a group with like buffs anything like that um they are just so strong with it one of their abilities for example subterranean assault this is the stamina morph or the well if you go to magicka morph deep fissure it is so good um it is an aoe that is low in cost and basically you have a little bit of a line that pops up when you cast it so let's show it so this is what happens you know you have this aoe pop up right in front of you and what is so great about this ability first of all it's timeable okay so let's say you have four wardens you count it down you say like okay subterranean assault in three two one and everyone casts it at the same time and that means you have like four of these abilities aoe's popping up at the same time so if you have some line of sighting or a gap let's say you are four or ten players and you got a zerg chasing down you see people typically going to choke points like this then they count down like behind the tree three two one they cast the ability they run into the zerg and boom it pops up not only does this do a great aoe damage um it is pretty strong i'm currently like on my tanking setup for pve so this damage is nowhere near what you would normally get 
it also afflicts the enemy with major fracture, reducing their physical resistance by 5.3k for 6 seconds. So you can see if you do this in combination with ultimate dumps, you really can nuke down any groups. On top of that, they got some other great buffs such as Ice Fortress, which the Ice grants Major Resolve and Major Watt, increasing your physical and spell resistance and granting you minor protection as well. But it's not just for you. Wrap a thick cloak of ice around you and your allies. On top of that, they got um, Natch Pets, which can give them Major Brutality or Major Sorcery and also give them some great sustain. Leeching Fines, which the Fines supply major, minor malice to you. They will really grant you a lot of healing in PvP and it to you or the lowest health ally in front of you so it also applies to allies on top of that they got a very powerful ultimate such as permafrost which is used a lot in pvp for small scale situations as well and you know other abilities such as impaling charge you know if you use that it, it is like you are elsa from frozen you know you see the ice popping out all around you you know that scene where she walks up the stairs and okay maybe i'm um dwindling a little bit away but you sort of get what i'm trying to say for example these abilities such as crowd control like you can see um snaring the enemies in place but also dealing some great overtime damage effects and then the official stuff like that it's just a really really good all-around class and like you see them a lot in battlegrounds especially in pre maze because apart from just dealing dps they can also be incredibly he good healers at the same time magicka slash frost warnings can be great healers and damage dealers at the same time while they are not that strong in one first one situations when you once you are looking more into group situations thanks to their timed abilities their buffs and all the other stuff they have they can be very very strong i really would say the one starts to shine when you are in um, in group situations and with group situations I am kind of thinking, you know, like duo PvP, you can definitely make it work, but like three people, four people, that's when it really starts to shine. And then just having a couple of wardens in group situations is really, really strong and something you don't really want to fight against. Um, there are other ultimates such, such as healing thickets. Um, once you have cast it, the moment it's done, you already have it up for like 50, 55%. So if you were two people or just two wardens, you can keep this ultimate up at all times. And my dog is barking. Stupid animal. Okay, let's move on to the next one. And last, but definitely not least, the Necromancer, the newer class. Now, of course, Blight Blast Bones from the standard Necromancer is currently bugged. And hopefully we're gonna see some better improvement in terms of PvP. One first, one dueling. I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't... Like, the Necromancer seems really strong at the moment with the Pummeling Goliath, but... Even then, we can just we can just base like how the necromancer performs only on the ultimate called Pummeling Goliath, which spams. So currently, the necromancer feels a bit similar to the warden in terms of where it is good at and not. So in regards of dueling, it doesn't seem that the necromancer is as powerful as some of the other classes, such as sorcerer or the knife blade. But in terms of group PvP. It is incredibly powerful. Several abilities such as Boneyard, which can deal um, great AoE damage even more based on the amount of corpses around there, um, the synergies that can be activated, stuff like that. But on top of that, something that is like insanely powerful is the ultimate from Gravelord, um, Frozen Colossus or Pestilent Colossus. Not only does this deal <laughs> a great amount of DPS, the Colossus smashes the ground three times over, dealing 9.3k, 10k and 11k disease damage with the first, second and third smash. Um, this is with low weapon damage currently, like unbuffed. There's more heavy armor build that can be buffed on much further. Um, so respectively, you, like, you can make this deal much more damage, but each mass smash applies major vulnerability to enemy hit for 3 seconds, increasing the damage taken by 30%. So you can imagine if you are like in a group situation like 10 versus 10 again and you print on this colossus not only does it do a significant amount of damage it also applies major vulnerability which allows the rest of your group who is most likely going to ultimate dump with dawn breakers um, using to use 
abilities such as subterranean assault, um, other ultimates like take flight, destruction ultimate, you know what, um, increase the damage taken by 30% on enemy players. And it's a pretty big AoE, like you can see over here, it's like this, and the smashes apply quick, pretty quick as well. So applying something like Tethernus only deals a really good amount of damage, but also applies the major vulnerability, which really uh, allows your group to deal much more damage. It is just so powerful. Now, in terms of support, they have some really good abilities that will not only deal DPS, but they can also buff their allies, such as heals. Um, the Bone Totem is also very nice, you know, granting minor protection to you and your allies, stuff like that, reducing the damage taken. So all with all, I feel like the Necromancer, while not as efficient for one first one situations, and kind of on par there with the Warden, not that good for one first one, it is really good when we are starting to get more into group situations, just like the Warden. Um, small scale, like four people, the Necromancer can already be very useful, thanks to his Living Death Ultimate like reanimating allies is extremely useful when you're doing small scale or even big scale pvp because zerg's overall wipe like they lose members they get picked off one by one and while they do try to resurrect sometimes um, they just can't stop they like they can walk over the course they will try to rest but then there are siege ballistas flying from every side and oil so they have to move on and the ultimate like reanimate can really help there they can walk over it someone use reanimate um, you're gonna use Purify, heal your just resurrected group member back up and you just keep walking. So in that way it can be very very supportive as well. Um, other things such as Revenant's Goliath, like the other morph if you're going with a health tank build. Um, I actually do have a health tank build which is on the website. Can be very strong as well against big groups. But one first one Necromancer wouldn't be my first choice. Um, maybe it changes with bl Blight and Blast Wounds like fixed. Uh, I know a lot of people, like a couple of people say they can get some really strong shields with the Magicka Necromancer, but we I gotta have to see exactly that. Like, they, they can do a lot of burst, but they, they, they overall use something like the Frozen Colossus in order to get that burst or um, something like that. I'm strictly talking about PvP again here, so keep that in mind. So that is my opinion about the Necromancer. And that makes us cover all the classes. So again with this video, like like I said, I'm not all-knowing. Um, this is just to give you a better insight on PvP classes. This is just my opinion. How I feel about the PvP classes. But I have pretty much played all the PvP classes. Now, if you disagree or anything, like I would love to read your comments. So definitely feel free to leave a comment. And, you know, I can just react like what's my reasoning or what's my thinking behind it. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you're unsure about which class to pick, uh, feel free to look up which class to pick ESO, we got a few on that. I will be making separate videos for ESO best 1 vs X class, best, uh, like, I will be making a couple of different videos about that, because this video is already quite long now with time fragments, so if I would have added that, the video would just be way too long. I hope you enjoyed this video, I wish you a great day. And if you need PvP builds, check out LearnESO.net. We got PvP builds for all classes. Dragonite, Sorcerer, Templar, Warden, Nightblade, and the new, new class Necromancer as well. PvE builds are added as well. We got Gold Guys, Leveling Guys, Crafting Guys, everything you need to know. I wish everyone a great day. Bye-bye. I'm out.